National Treasury reacted to the downgrade by SNP to junk status by saying that we need to try and move away from relying on foreign debt. Um, could you explain this uh, and how it, it might impact South Africa? People have, I think, misunderstood okay. the point that's made there. Okay. The point that is made, uh, which I think uh, is, a, is a good point, well-intended point, is that uh, as a country, we must raise the level of savings in mm. South Africa so that uh, at a macroeconomic level, we can depend less and less on savings from other parts of the world. Uh, and the logic for this uh, has, has many facets to it, but the, the simplest one that I will, I will share with uh, uh, South Africans is this. In, in people who come from outside South Africa, when they invest, for instance, in our bonds, not only do they face the interest rate risk, uh, but they also face the exchange rate risk. So in their case, uh, if yields go up, the, on a macro market basis, the value of their uh, assets or investments decreases. But at the same time, if that coincides with a depreciation in the currency, so they get hit twice. Yes. Uh, so, so it is to be expected, therefore, that whenever they, they, there is a change in the perception or the real risk uh, they view associated, to be associated with these investments, they would act uh, too uh, quickly, certainly than South African investors uh, in some instances. So that's the, 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 the logic of it. And, and, and just to illustrate this point further, if you will allow me, please, if you look at a country like Japan, Japan's uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio is over 100 by the last time I checked, 100% of yeah. GDP. Yeah. But uh, Japan is still a very highly rated country. And I asked the rating agencies why that is so. It is because the Japan is depending on Japanese savings okay. to finance itself. Okay. So, so uh, it is making that argument but when you make it in too brief a way, yeah. then it gets misunderstood and misinterpreted. Okay, so I mean, a lot of the savings that would come then from relying less on foreign on foreign bonds would then be um, probably lowering the expenditure. Look, not necessarily. If, uh, if uh, for instance, we we cut our our uh, you know uh, suit according to our cloth, I think that's the saying in English. Uh, we try more and more to align our expenditure more to the size of our GDP and the rate at which it grows, then we begin to move closer to that. Of course, there, there are many things that you move in relation to this. If we work hard at making sure that we achieve higher and faster rates of growth, then all of a sudden you've got a different picture because the amount of revenue that you generate within the economy, the amount of income that you can tax, uh, the amount of transacting, uh, whether it's uh, uh, you know uh, VAT, uh, you know, in other words, your tax base expanding, exactly. uh, more resources being available from within the economy, and we are not arguing for autarky. Uh. We are not arguing for. We are not irritated by the fact that foreign savings come here. We're just being cautious that uh, the dependence on on foreign savings has got advantages, but it also has got disadvantages that are well known, written about, and to the extent that we want to ameliorate and mitigate uh, those disadvantages, those negatives, we must take steps proactively to ensure that uh, we, we, we build the, the, the macroeconomic strength of our, of our country. And, and, and the, the calls for moving to a BRICS rating agency or a Russian uh, ratings agency, um, is that something that could uh, replace the current rating agencies and, and sustain the le debt levels? There are different views on this. Uh, there are different views on this. Uh, it, 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 you know, when you think about, uh, you know, an own rating agency, yeah. it is important to understand or appreciate quite deeply that having your own rating that uh, rates you favorably sure. does not take you too far. It might be helpful in one sense. Uh, one, because 
uh, it is only when two rating agencies rate you, let's say for example, as a sub-investment grade, that the rating begins to matter. Okay. Uh, in more or less the similar way, if you just have one rating agency rating you triple A, mm. when others are rating you, let's say whatever, other rating, right? Triple B plus, uh, your debt instruments will not be traded on the basis of the one that stands out. So, so we, we, you need to be a little bit more elegant uh, in kind of thinking about it and approaching it. This is not an argument against it. Mm. Uh, I, I usually say sometimes in internal discussions with my counterparts, certainly not with my principals because I'm not at liberty to argue with them, but I do state <laughs> my views uh, uh, without fear or favor even in that regard. You, we would have been better off if we thought about creating our own rating agency when our country's ratings were improving. Okay. Right? You come and ride that positive wave. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you say you will have your own thing when others say things that you may not like about yourself, yeah. it, it, it does take away something from the credibility of your idea. Even if the idea is absolutely credible. Mm. Uh, so, the, so the timing uh, of, the, of the development uh, uh, is, is as important as the development itself. So that's a great, a great, a great point. Um, just one final question. Is, is that only one rating agency has downgraded us to non-investment mm. grade? What happens when Fitch, for example, downgrades us to non-investment grade? What will happen to our bond yields then? First, I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, but second, it then means that uh, uh, at least for that 10%, uh, if they also downgrade us just for the sure. foreign uh, currency denominated component, then it begins uh, to be traded as sub-investment grade. Uh, it may therefore mean that some of the holders of that debt are no longer allowed in terms of their mandates to hold that debt. Okay. So they will technically be in what uh, is called partial breach of their mandates. In other words, they are given a certain amount of time to get out of those positions. In other words, to sell the South African uh, bonds that they will be holding in their portfolio. And of course, that triggers usually a rise in the yield uh, in that debt, uh, uh, which means that uh, the, the debt service costs associated with those instruments uh, rise. But I mean, uh, uh, I hope that we don't get there.